Hi folks, Dr. Bob McCauley. This is part seven of my, the summary of my book, The Cure in the Mirror, Nature's Protocol for Surviving Cancer. Don't forget to subscribe, share this video, and smash that like button, and help the world to know that the body can cure itself of cancer. And I worked on this for the last three years, so um, we're getting kind of toward, uh, we're in, in the part now where I'm describing my health protocol. So we talked about the raw food cure up to around page 185 or so. It's a 300 page book. Um, the raw food cure, so uh, I, rather than the raw food diet, sounds like another fad diet, but all raw fruits and vegetables uh, cure the body. When you put them into your body, you're going to get some kind of a reaction that's rejuvenative and full. it's got full of enzymes, it's full of electrons. So this is what you want to put into your body. All disease comes from our diet. I remind you that throughout the book, I remind you throughout the book that this is the temple of God. And then when you put the right things into it, you'll have health. And when you put the wrong things into it, you'll have disease. So uh, the raw food cure, the, the only diet that works for everybody. So we talk about all these diets. And, uh, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of diets if you look out there and just Google types of diets. Uh, go to Wikipedia. You'll see two or 300 different types of diet. Well, there's one that's really healthy, and it's called the raw food diet. And it's just a diet of raw fruits and vegetables. And I anchor that with spirulina and chlorella because I, then I get 60% protein in those foods. So you've got this broad array of nutrients and you've got at least all your protein. You're going to have the, the nutritional basis of your, of your diet right there. Next chapter heading is, you know, the remarkable power of raw living foods. And they are. They're incredibly powerful. You know, sprouts. Um, you know, I do a lot of sprouting during the winter months. Um, you know, people kind of laugh at them, you know, they they're sound wimpy or whatever. Sprouts are some of the most powerful foods you could possibly consume. Uh, so they, you know, raw fruits and vegetables do have remarkable power, and it is amazing the rejuvenative pro properties of the human body. Um, so next is uh, convenience leads to disease. Yeah, the more convenient the food, uh, other than like a banana, I just love bananas, and I love the convenience of a banana. You just open it, and it's ready to go. It's just sitting there waiting to eat. It's really any kind of fruit or vegetable like that, just ready to eat right there. But we don't look at that. We don't go to those foods as convenience. We go to convenient foods. We go to fast food joints. Uh, we go to, you know, we get things out of a package. We want to pop them into the uh, these pocket things, you know, you pop them into the microwave, and they're ready in just 30 seconds. The convenience, and convenience leads to disease believe me. Uh, CBD, the best nutrient. CBD is cannabinoid. It comes from hemp and there's a lot of controversy about that because it might be distantly related to uh, THC. Uh, THC and CBD are really good cancer cures together, uh, but that's, you know, it, it, it's, THC is beginning to come on and, and actually be available out there in the market, so um, I'm really shocked at that, but, uh, you know, if you want to take something like CBD, I think it's the best, one of the best nutrients I've ever seen in my life. It does incredible things in the body. There's something in your body called the cannabinoid endocrine system, so it, it kind of feeds that. It's very, very good for you. Anti-cancer mushrooms. I go through a list of all the mushrooms that are that are the really powerful anti-cancer. The two top, top two or three on my list will be <clears throat> Number one, of course, chaga. Chaga mushroom is my absolute favorite mushroom. Next one is reishi mushroom. And then um, turkey tail is really good. Cordyceps, those are all really powerful anti, uh, you know, anti-cancer um, mushrooms. Um, next is beginning the raw food lifestyle. I talk about how to go about it, how you start out, what you can do. The blueprints of our cells, well, that's RNA and DNA, mainly RNA, really. So when your, your cells go to replicate they need the instructions RNA are the instructions and if you don't have RNA in the body well, you, then you're not going to have the instructions so you're going to get a diminished copy of that cell just think about that you need to have that material sitting there the instruction code to for that cell to go in there and know what to do and, and know how to replicate itself but again if you don't have those instructions how could it possibly replicate possibly uh, properly and so what you ended up getting is this um, you know, diminished copy of a cell. And then through life, as you go from 40 to 50 to 60, you get a diminished copy of a diminished copy of a diminished copy. Pretty soon, you're not even remotely the same person because this carbon copy of the cell um, just becomes, you know, more and more pale and pale and pale and increasingly diminished from its original uh, instruction set of codes. So you got to have RNA and DNA. Well, you get those from uh, chlorella growth factor. That's the heart of the chlorella. It's kind of chlorella extract. We've taken out all of a lot of the stuff and we get down to the nucleic acids. That's RNA. Um, there's another type of yeast that's really good 
that I promote for RNA. Um, you know, the, the fortifying your immune, um, immune system, well, a CGF, chlorella growth factor, which is more than just nucleic acids, it's polypeptides, poly nucleopeptides, some amino acids, really powerful nutri nutrients, and that's all you've got them extracted down to this powerful food. Um, and uh, the, the lymph system. Uh, we get into, you know, uh, the workhorse of the immune system. So your lymph system uh, is works throughout the bo body. And if you get lymph cancer uh, or lymphoma, <clears throat> which is cancer of the lymph system, you're gonna, you, you have become so toxic. I mean, your lymph system is there to remove toxins from the body. That's what, it, that's what its main purpose is. It's this liquid. And so you've so, uh, you know, uh, toxified, you've put so many toxins in your body, you've become so toxic, um, so poisoned, that even your lymph system can't even operate now. So uh, this is a huge indication of how incredibly toxic you really are. Well, next is a, a most difficult da task, and that is building the immune system. It's very, very, very hard to do is to build the immune system. One of the hardest things you can do in health, it took me many, many years after I stopped eating cooked foods to bu really build up my immune system. I mean, I was susceptible to colds and flus and everything. and. You know, once I really built my immune system, I mean, it probably took a good 10 years to do that, living on a raw food diet, taking spirulina and chlorella, CGF every single day. It took a long time. And uh, then by the time in 2012 I got meningitis, I had an immune system that could fight that all by itself. I didn't need any medications, drugs, any of that kind of stuff. I got through it myself. And then I go into immune builders. What, what builds the immune system? Uh, what are the foods? What what do we need to do? And an uphill midlife challenge. Well, that's what I talked about. I, I didn't become a raw foodist till I was about 40. So I'd spent 40 years on cooked food diet. Well, I had to undo a lot of stuff. I mean, the human body is incredibly resilient and rejuvenative. But uh, if you start when you're 20, it's a lot easier than when you start when you're 40 or when you start when you're 60. It's, it's even more difficult. Of course, it always depends on what your diet was. I'd been a vegetarian for 20 years before I started doing it. So that helped. Um, the wisdom of the body. Um, your body knows everything. Your body is total wisdom over everything. All you need to do is put things into your body. It knows what to do with them. Uh, when your body doesn't feel uh, good, or you put it, you're, you're, you're something's wrong, something's out of balance. You have a you have a disease, a disease. You're, you don't feel at ease. Your body's telling you something. It knows what to do. Next is probiotics, uh, which is component number four in my seven component health protocol. And uh, that's the friendly bacteria. Very, very important. Uh, since all disease comes from your diet, you've got to have digestive health. We talked about earlier, killing everything in the digestive tract and then putting everything back um, and uh, you know, in, a, in a healthy way, putting back the friendly bacteria, uh, the prebiotics, and uh, the fermented foods, and the probiotics, the, the, the bacteria. Um, next is all disease comes from our diet. Exactly. So that's the importance of uh, you know, having digestive health really the most important thing, digestive health. Um, understanding the digestive process, I just kind of go through that, um, just so you know what's going on in there, because a lot of people will say, my digestion is, um, you know, acts like this, acts like that. We might have slight sensitivities. It's all about what you put into your body. So the idea that your digestion is different from anyone else's, well, it, it all mechanically works the same. It's like saying, you know, I drive this car, I drive an Audi, and my Audi is a different issue. It's the same model, same year, same make, everything, but my engine's different from the other ones. Well, no, it's not. They're all the same. And the engine of our digestive tract is all the same. We're all humans. They all work the same. We're not cows. We don't have seven uh, stomachs. We just have one stomach, so we're, we all work the same physiologically. Um, you know, I just go over the digestive process overview. Next is physiological processes that require, require minerals. That's component number five in my seven component health protocol. Um, key, minerals are the keys that, that start the engine of our health, so if you have uh, if you don't, you're not getting all your minerals, you're not going to have uh, phys physiological health. You, you've got to have a mineral for everything. The most important mineral is magnesium. That's our heart mineral. Uh, you know, next, magnesium, of course, in the brain, but, you know, calcium for your bones, as you know. But then tin for the ear. 
and gold helps us to sleep and it helps with sleep sleep regulation uh, platinum helps with uh, focus and concentration so these these are all things that we should be constantly putting into your body I, I have a full spectrum mineral that I recommend for people I break them out onto morning evening and after uh, and afternoon and evening so you can take them at different times if you want to do that but they're very important how to consume minerals I do liquid angstrom minerals you put a little bit under your tongue and swallow it. it's the best way to take minerals uh, they're electrical conductors what are those are those are electrolytes um, when you're fasting you want to make sure that's calcium magnesium potassium um, you know sodium you want to make sure that you're taking those when you're fasting so you're making sure you're getting especially that magnesium so it's not too much of a strain on the heart uh, if you are fasting and you're you know you're really toxic if you're really toxic and you're fasting you're gonna kind of have a lot of discomfort but you have to go through that and you can do it I know everybody can always do it um, um, next is magnesium, our most important mineral. That's your heart mineral. Uh, the most important gland, it's, it's, it's the thyroid. Uh, every drop of blood goes through the thyroid every 15 minutes. Well, you know, um, you got to feed that. That's iodine. That's hard to get. Uh, it's very difficult to find that any, in any food. And people say, well, seafood. Well, again, you're just eating the animal, eating the, 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 the seafood, whatever it is, the fish or the you know the the lobster it's usually sh shellfish and they they've got iodine well they just ate the algae so you get it from algae uh you know brown seaweed extract which i i promote and sell and uh, which is hoponica laminara um, but it's high high in in iodine um, and it, fluoride interferes with iodine so you put fluoride into the water which they do all over the country unfortunately and it interferes with iodine uptake. Um, next is detoxification properties of, of minerals and how they you know, remove toxins from the body. Uh, when I first started taking full spectrum minerals, my body went through some really big adjustments. I had diarrhea for a couple of days and I'd been on a raw food diet for a long time. So, you know, once again, the wisdom of the body, it knows what's going on and you don't even need to worry about it. That's what's great. You don't even need to know what all these things do like I do, like I'm a health geek. You just put it in your body and it does the rest. It's great. And when you put junk in your body, like fast foods, it knows what to do with that. Actually, actually, it doesn't know what to do with it. It kind of looks and says, what's, what's this garbage? Um, competing minerals, you know, minerals that compete with one another and why you want to kind of uh, take them at different times if possible. Vigorous daily exercise, pr pr proponent number component number six of my seven component health protocol. You got to exercise. You got to get out every day. Um, if if it's you need to do, you know, hopefully 15, 20 minutes, 25 minutes every day where you're doing cardiovascular, you know, where you're panting and you're breathing. Um, you know, people just want to get lazy about that and uh, and not do the right thing. But you, it's daily vigorous exercise is critical to great health. I'll leave it there for now. I'm trying to keep these, you know, 10 to 12 minutes if possible. That's part seven of the summary of my new book, The Cure in the Mirror, Nature's Protocol for Surviving Cancer. You can, um, you know, cure the body of any disease. Uh, once again, please share this video. Uh, like it. It really helps in the algorithms. It gets the word out that the body can cure itself of any disease, even cancer, becoming one of the most common diseases. Almost everybody in their life is going to face cancer. They know somebody with cancer. Dr. Bob, I'll see you next time. That's it for you.